Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Lita Leepens. And welcome to another edition of Our City Tonight. Well, Jim, we're right here in the west end of Vancouver, which uh, nudges right up against Stanley Park. A couple blocks that way, we've got English Bay. It's a gorgeous area and a lot of really great antique old kind of building. That's right, yeah. If you're watching in the rest of the country, you want to check out the West End when you come to Vancouver. Right behind us in the West End is Adesso Bistro. We're going to check out some of the food and cocktails this mm. wonderful, cozy little spot has to offer coming up later in the show. But first, let's get right to Our City Tonight. segment of Spirits Up is brought to you by Time Winery and Evolve Cellars. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> We're here for our Spirits Up segment in the beautiful Yale Town area of Vancouver, and uh, we can't wait to try some great wines. Jim, where are we? Well, this is actually a really cool spot because if you are watching the rest of the country, or even in the lower mainland, it's kind of two levels. So we're going to check out the new Oxford coming up later in the show, which is upstairs, but we're downstairs at the tavern at the new Oxford, which actually faces Yale Town. With a great patio. Yeah, a great patio here. Yes, Chris Lee. Summer, summer wines, what are we going to start with? Well, patio, <laughs> what better thing to talk about? So mm. I've started with our Evolve Cellars Pinot Blanc. So mm. this is one of our largest produced wines that we do, even though we're a small winery still. And Pinot Blanc is super versatile. We use it in our sparkling wine as well. And because it's got a lot of fruitness, forwardness to it, but also a lot of acid. So Pinot Blanc, to me, on this I get apple and pear. And on the nose, mm. it reminds me of just walking through an Okanagan orchard at blossom time. Mm. You've just got that mm. fruitness to it. Mm. And uh, nice, great, nice. fresh. And you always, you always come up with these great phrases that I end up using later to sound what, like, more <laughs> like fruitness? <laughs> fruit, no, fruit I know, fruitness. Like, no, no. that's not really a word, no, no, no. but I just made that up. She said fruit, fruit forwardness. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Exactly. But then fruitness came in there, and yes. I, do, I do taste the apples, the nice yeah, tart. Definitely. Tart right. apples um, that. And as always, because we're covering some of the Donnelly uh, restaurants and pubs in Vancouver for our uh, mm -hmm. spirit stuff, I mean, we're on a patio right now, and they got a great menu here as well. What, what would go with, the, with this? This is perfect with like their cob salad uh, or chicken salad. Uh, I love Pinot Blanc with salmon. BC salmon oh, and Pinot wonderful. Blanc is one of the best pairings, I think. Excellent. Nice. Well, Very this nice. is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going to come back in just a few seconds and talk about another wine here on the patio at the New Oxford called Tavern at the New Oxford. Back here on the patio at Tavern, uh, what do we have? Well, we kind of recognize the color. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's pink, so it's rosé. Mm -hmm. yeah. What better wine to have on a patio, I think, than a rosé? So this is our Time Winery rosé. Mm. This is 100% Syrah. Mm. There's not a lot of rosés that are made in British Columbia that are actually Syrah. And this one's also a little bit different because quite often if you were to do a rosé out of Syrah, it would be what we call a saigné, where you bleed off, you're making the red wine and you bleed mm. off the rosé. These grapes were grown specifically to be rosé, so as a result, it's rich, it's round, it's luscious. I don't know about you, but when I smell this, all you have to do is open it and you smell the aromatics. So mm. strawberry, watermelon, uh, it's kind of like a fruit salad. I, this mm. is my favorite wine by you guys, I think. Oh, you it, say that every yeah. time, but thank you. No, yeah. this really, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> such, such a rat. No, we do love it. <laughs> hey, we're going to come back later in the show with Chris and Lee. We're going to talk about another wine. We're going to move upstairs to the sister restaurant called New Oxford Pub. That's coming up later in the show. Well, about 45 minutes from Vancouver is the town of Port Moody, and a little part of it is a very cool area known as Newport Village, which is where we are right now. And we're standing in front of MD Cosmetic and Laser Clinic. We're here to talk to Dr. Alibi, the expert on aesthetic medicine. He's the founder of this particular clinic. Doctor, um, Cosmetic and or aesthetic medicine, um, what your clinic practices, is a billion dollar industry and it still holds a little bit of, uh, you know, stigma of people not wanting to share what they've got done, the work they've got done, as they say. Um, this is changing though, isn't it? It is, it is. I mean, this is one of the most rapidly growing industries in the world. We have an aging population. Mm -hmm. People are concerned about their appearance. They want to look good. They want to feel good. And now with the advancements in aesthetic medicine, we can deliver safe, natural looking results that make people feel and look better. 
and the, there's been so many improvements in the industry now, such as Botox and dermal fillers, lasers to remove acne and scars and pigmentation. Mm -hmm. And the industry has now become so much more effective and safe. But you do need to do your homework. You need to do your research. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and Lita and I will tell our viewers, we both wanted to experience this so yes. we could talk about it with you. And, and uh, I was one of those that growing number of men that are, are getting the procedures done, but I was also very intimidated yeah. because I'd read nothing but horror stories. So you kind of sat me down and explained all the safety measures. Um, I had this done right here, yes. uh, which was not painful at all. Yeah. It was quick, but I was really impressed with uh, the, the, the lengths you guys go to make sure that regulations, rules, and, and cleanliness and safety are all followed. And what did Jim have done? Jim had Botox. Okay. He had a, a light dosage of Botox right here in the frown lines. And this is probably one of the most common areas we treat because when you have frown lines, it makes you look sad, tired, mm -hmm. unapproachable. And a little bit of Botox just makes you look fresh and rested and softer. And so that's one of our most common procedures mm -hmm. and it can be done in five or 10 minutes, but it needs to be done by the right hands, mm -hmm. experienced hands, yes. and in the right dosage and then you get very nice, soft results that last three to four months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for myself, um, yes. pigmentation was my concern, yes. so you instructed me to get Pico. So we did a PicoSure, which is a new technology. Mm -hmm. It's a new laser that delivers energy in a trillionth of a second. And what it does is it basically shatters the pigment and it breaks it down without any downtime and with safety and efficacy. And that laser is beautiful because we can treat brown spots, melasma, hyperpigmentation in all skin types, in even darker skin types. Mm -hmm. And you know that in Vancouver we have all ethnicities mm -hmm. and this laser is safe on all skin types to lift pigment and improve acne scarring and fine wrinkles. Well, I have to say, um, after about a week when you know swelling went down, well, it, it didn't last. It lasted a couple of days. Right. I actually had comments about my skin, right. so um, you know I still have a little bit of pigmentation. Right. I know that you have to get the treatment treatments. done, a few more treatments, but I'm very impressed, Excellent. and it didn't hurt. It was yeah. like little. No, not a, not at all. And I was told that I was more approachable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about later in the show when we yeah. come back, uh, in all seriousness, is that what I felt comfortable is seeing you and talking to you and being here, why you should see someone like you mm -hmm. and not your next door neighbor who's having a Botox party. We're going to mm -hmm. talk more about safety and the damages that can take place. And qualifications. And qualifications <laughs> coming up later in our show. Well, we're back here at Odesso in the West End where we began the show and we're going to check out the food in their lovely patio in just a little while. But first, to the cocktails and the man that we want to speak to is right here. Absolutely, Angus. Uh, you've got two signature cocktails that you've brought your own little branding to this great place. Um, can you describe a little bit of what you've done differently for these? I guess one's kind of a traditional one. Yeah, yeah happily. Like one of them's a spin on uh, a Negroni. It's the classic Italian aperitif. And what we wanted to do was take the Negroni and kind of put our own little spin on it so you would get something unique when you came here. So your standard Negroni is one uh, equal parts gin, Cinzano and Campari. And to kind of mix it up a wee bit and add a bit of flair, we used cucumber gin made by a long table distillery here in Vancouver, Duboni, which is a red wine based spirit, and then equal parts Campari and Aperol to create a very herbal, floral, and a much like more unique kind of drink is what we wanted to create. So this is the, the beast you see in front of you, and it's uh, <laughs> available here. Yeah. Making me absolute, I'm actually yeah, gonna do the trying. I love, I've actually learned to love Negronis over this last year. Nice. Mm. That is spectacular. Yeah. Oh my Thanks. God, no. Well, well Lita's trying not to drink all of that mm, on camera. Love uh, it, well presented. <laughs> what is uh, my drink all about? So yours is uh, one of our most popular ones here, actually. It's called the Elder and Younger. Okay. It's a spin on a gin gimlet, and it uses elderflower press. Mm. It's a house-made syrups that we actually make here in the bar. So it's equal parts thyme and dill syrup, uh, simple syrups. And then we've also got our house-made cucumbers, uh, cucumber syrup, sorry, gin, lilac, which is a very, very like uh, sweet uh, wine-based spirit, and that's shaken with ice and lime juice. So it's uh, mm. one that I hope you enjoy. <laughs> I'm sure Jim will. Mm. Some oh, nice summer oh, day. Now oh, these are your wow. summer specials, right? But if someone falls in love with them, I'm sure if they get to know you, they can come in here anytime. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Just, uh, a little nod, a little wink, and I'll make these up for you. Perfect, no perfect. Well, I also love that you had this little saying um, about 
your garnishes doing what? Oh yeah, so like uh, I, this was many, many moons ago. I was uh, training to be a chef and my head chef said a garnish should always wake up your food. It should always wake up the plate. So that's where the idea of uh, like when you when you bruise mint, just so you get those those aromas, and with the orange you can flame the orange, and what that does is that wakes up the drink almost, Wonderful. and it also adds a bit of theatre, so it keeps people invested. It wakes in the, the people up too. Say, yeah. Yeah. Fire in the and you also coined the phrase that you should never shake the drink while looking at the customer because that's kind of creepy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like the, the worst thing you can do when you're shaking a drink is staring at your customer uh, because it, it completely throws the whole night into question. Well, if you keep making drinks like this, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're going to uh, go from inside, thank you for the cocktails, we're going to go from inside the cozy restaurant known as Adesso to their gorgeous patio that's coming up a little later in the show. While we're here in downtown Vancouver in a part of town known as Crosstown at the very trendy, hip Shambar restaurant. Absolutely, we're here for the Vancouver Design Week's launch party. This is the third annual. Jane, what brings you to uh, be a part of an event like this? Um, well, my background is in interior design and I moved into brand communications and I've lived in Vancouver now for 14 years and we are a growing city and we have a growing design community and it's very exciting to connect it and actually create some awareness around it. Wonderful. And uh, so impact is the theme. What brought about that theme this year? Well, this is our third year of doing Vancouver Design Week and we, in the momentum that's building, impact is very important to just create awareness and to really communicate the uh, design as a tool for change, um, design for innovation and the impact that it creates on our world. Great, thanks. Well, we're back here at Adesso, but we're out here on their gorgeous patio with their head chef, and uh, we are excited to try some of the new menu items. You've taken this restaurant by storm, and you've infused your own little ideas, big ideas, actually, into Absolutely. the restaurant. Can you tell us what we're about to eat? Um, so over here we have the uh, my game hen dish. Uh, it's essentially a game hen roulade. Uh, I basically debone the entire game hen, uh, and then roll all the meat back up in the skin so with every bite you get a little bit of dark meat a little bit of white meat wonderful um, it's really delicious uh, a little bit of potato fondant um, confit onions and uh, some mushrooms excellent this is great so you've taken the work out of having to work oh, on yeah, a, yeah. a, a little game. more work for myself yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah. for the guests the customers are going to enjoy it uh, and you know we, we should say too is it takes a lot of guts to actually do a dramatic change in your menu now uh, here mm -hmm. in the West End you, you guys were I guess traditional Italian you jump to what we're being Absolutely. told is modernistic. Is that the? the um, it's, yeah, it's like a general it's, category, uh, but you've brought all your experience in with a number of dishes, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think it's a reflection of my cooking background as far as uh, previous to this, I was at Hawksworth Restaurant, and uh, before that, I was the executive chef at uh, Wildebeest and Gas Town. So, um, you know, I definitely like to be creative. Uh, Use a little bit of French, a little bit of Italian, a little bit of Asian influence as well. So, uh, what, and what is what is this here? Uh, so this is our uh, one of my pasta dishes. It's a stuffed pasta. Um, we make it fresh every day in house. Uh, it's a squash and ricotta aglanotti. Uh, a little bit of squash puree, tossed with some um, reduced cream and parmesan, and oh. topped with a little bit of. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. He is, Jim, and I forgot Absolutely. to take a bite. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, oh um. Hmm. What you should say as well, you guys do turn your, your, your wines and your menu over quite frequently, which we always like to hear. I mean, Absolutely. we're drinking, um, we've got rosé and bubbly, rosé by the glass and, and the tap here, that's fantastic. Yep. But you're always looking for new things to add to your menu. Oh yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've got a billion ideas and, uh, you know, I'm constantly <laughs> working to evolve the menu. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm super passionate about food, I love to cook, so... You know, it's uh, that it's serves us here. well, and yeah. but you have apparently a great happy hour. So oh, yeah. Yeah, let us know hour. what are some of the great ideas for happy hour because I think this whole city has turned into a happy hour hound. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, well, I mean, we we do offer uh, a very nice uh, charcuterie plates. Um, mm. One of my favorite uh, dishes that we've done on the happy hour menu is uh, we've done a beef tataki <gasps> with mm. uh, ponzu sauce, uh, some compressed uh, sushi rice that's uh, fried off. Uh, it's super delicious. The ponzu sauce will just 
make mm, your mouth water. Sounds so. great. Now, nice. and I also know that you guys do cater to uh, certain food preferences as well, gluten-free. You've Absolutely. even got some vegan yeah. options, yeah. so that's uh -huh. great uh -huh. to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Chef, we want to thank you for this. Check out mm -hmm. the happy hour, which we should say is 3 to 5. Mm. Absolutely. And you guys are closed Mondays. Yes. Okay, Absolutely. well, we're going to dig into this food, enjoy this great patio. If you're watching the rest of the country, come check out the cozy and historic West End, and of course, Odessa. Thank you very much. Thank Chef. you so much. Now i got to eat some of this food. Excuse <laughs> <Enjoy> me. Enjoy it. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we're back here with Dr. Ali Bai, and I want to talk to you about something that I found concerning that safety. You have uh, uh, taught over 2,500 doctors, so you're more than capable of explaining some of the, the problems people have when they want to get this treatment. Can you talk about why they should see someone like you and not that neighborhood Botox party that someone's holding? <laughs> I think it's, that's an excellent question. This is really important because we live in a day and age now where a lot of people are pretending to be doctors, are pretending to be trained physicians who know how to practice aesthetic medicine. So I really think it's important that the consumer, the average patient out there, do some research mm -hmm. and choose a reputable clinic mm -hmm. which is you know, staffed by a licensed medical doctor mm -hmm. who has experience in aesthetic medicine. Because if you don't, you're going to pay the consequences. Yeah. You're going to have side effects, you're going to have complications, and I see it every day in my practice. So I urge those who, who are in, interested in aesthetic medicine, do your homework and go to a reputable medical clinic and be treated by a licensed medical doctor. And your medicine is not just about looking better either. I mean, we've talked at length uh, at um, things like uh, helping acne, rosacea with scarring, um, sweating yes. too much. Is something very use embarrassing. We Botox to treat hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating in the underarms, the palms, or the soles. Wow. We use Botox to treat chronic migraine headaches. Oh. And then we have so many new technologies for acne, for acne scarring, for rosacea. So the industry has grown so rapidly. There's so many things we can do to make people look better, but also to feel better and to get back their confidence and self-esteem. Well, we look forward to coming back and talking That's to you at more at length. Uh, some of these, um, some of these. Yes, this would be good for parents to see. Absolutely, <laughs> have kids that suffer from that. Thank you, doctor. Pleasure. Well, it's time for another uh, of Jim's movie and TV reviews. Let's start with a movie that they're not really calling a sequel, but in my mind it is. We're talking about Sicario, Day of Soldado. Now, if you caught the first Sicario, I loved it. It was my top 10 a couple years ago. Uh, we bring back Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro. There's no Emily Blunt in this film, but these two guys are brought back together again to hunt down a drug cartel who is smuggling terrorists across the U.S. border. Okay, sequels are rarely better than the first one, and this one isn't, but I still enjoyed it enough to give it a big thumbs up. It it's a seven and a half out of ten because I always like watching Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro. Look for that, it's in theaters now. My second movie is a movie that put a smile on my face for a whole movie because of my age. If you are of a certain age, Mr. Rogers is somebody that you know all about. He pulled several generations of kids grew up watching his very intelligent show. Now comes a new documentary called Won't You Be My Neighbor? And it follows the life and the work of uh, Fred Rogers. I really enjoyed this movie, again, partly because I grew up on his show and he was one of the first people to actually treat kids like adults and treat them caringly on his TV show. And as I said, several generations grew up with this man. I really enjoyed this. If you are from that era where you did watch his show, and it is another era when it comes to kids programming, you will enjoy this. This gets an eight and a half out of 10. Good to see a documentary done on this legendary TV person. Okay, let's get to the big blockbusters. Of course, Jurassic Park is back. The new one is called Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. I've liked this series since the beginning when it started way back in the early 90s. In this movie, we've got Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard back, along with one of the original characters from the original movies, Jeff Goldblum. Now, they have to go back to that island. Yeah, they're going back to the island for the 80th time, this time because the volcano is taking place, and they need to get the dinosaurs off the island. What could possibly go wrong? I really enjoyed the last one, the reboot that came a few years ago. And again, this is a sequel, and I think this series is starting to run out of gas, but I'll always want to see it. Look for Jurassic uh, World Fallen Kingdom. It gets a six and a half to seven out of 10. From the big screen to the small screen and home viewing, and a couple of iconic people who are really a part of the TV and film landscape all through the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I'm talking about Elvis and, and Jerry Lewis, two very different people, but both had their very iconic careers. If you're a fan of Elvis Presley, look for the brand new box set from Paramount Pictures. It includes five of his movies. One of my favorites, Blue Hawaii, is in that set. Also, look for Jerry Lewis, 10 films you get with this package, including The Nutty Professor and The Patsy 
Both are available from Paramount Pictures and both available for home viewing. That does it for this edition of my movie and TV review. So let's go from reviews of movie and TVs to celebrating excellent in TV and movies in our province of BC. Lita has a two-part series starting right now. She was on the red carpet at the BC Leo Awards recently, and I'll let her take it from here. Well, we're so lucky to be here at the Leos with one of our favorite actresses, of course, uh, Camille Sullivan. Thank you for, again, spending some time. You're kind of sought after today. Oh, okay. um, you're up for lead, lead performer in a dramatic series, of course, The Disappearance, that we've talked to you about. What was the biggest challenge for playing Helen in that series? I think the biggest challenge is it's such a heartbreaking thing to have your child disappear, that it's like, it, it's something that Helen has to carry with her every moment of every scene, and it's very dark. Yeah, but you don't have kids. I know people are saying, like, how did you prepare for a role like that? How did you get that deep, dark feeling? I think I just imagine, you know, I don't have kids, but there's people I love, and you imagine someone you love in danger, you know, you lose your mind. No, totally. <laughs> and so what do I dare ask? What are you working on next? Actually, Gabrielle Rose was telling us. Oh, um, <laughs> yes. With Gabrielle and I did a movie called Kingsway, directed by Bruce Sweeney, and it's fun, and it's funny, and we play mother-daughter, and it's uh, Again. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So it's and what else? So now I'm doing Unspeakable for CBC and Sundance TV, and it's about the tainted blood crisis in the 80s when uh, the Red Cross was handling blood products for hemophiliacs and um, gave out tainted products and infecting people with HIV and hepatitis C. Wow. It's another, it's pretty, it's it's a tragedy. It's a tragic story. It's very, very interesting and very important Canadian wow. history. Oh my God, you've always got some great roles and we certainly look forward to seeing all those. And, and good luck tonight. Thank you so much. So you're opening this segment by saying it's Jim's fault that we haven't been on set with your great show. Jim Gordon is a terrible friend who <laughs> refuses to return my phone calls and claims that he wants to come and see my show, but really I don't think does. Well, I think I think we're going to get a little pass to go to see the show. Uh, congratulations on being nominated. That Thank is you. amazing. We are absolutely, fingers crossed for you, great show. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're in our third season. We start airing in September on Sci-Fi and we'll be on Netflix the following January. Um, and it's great. We're having a really good time making it. And you got some good talent. Got some amazing talent. Uh, Kelly Overton and Christopher Heyerdahl, who's nominated tonight. Alex Ponovic, who's nominated tonight. Uh, and Jonathan Scarf, who's nominated tonight. Really powerhouse performers and um, a lot of fun to work with all of them. So you're just sweeping, basically, the awards. Well, we have 13 nominations tonight, so we're really super happy. And it's just nice to be able to work in our local community with our friends um, and make a show for the American Marketplace, but with all Canadians, which is great. That is unusual, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Alex, uh, we love interviewing you. We love that you are one of our buddies. <laughs> we yes. love following your show. I love hanging out with you guys. <laughs> What's it like to be human again? I, I love it. The trajectory, like being a bad dude on the show was really fun. And then when they gave me the switch to be uh, a human, it was really kind of one of those things that I get to really um, embrace who I am. A lot of, I play a lot of character roles. So they just allowed me to be me and just kind of have fun and be like a, be like a Tom Cruise moment in, in the show. It's been, it's been great. But are you still mean? No, not me. Not me, not me. No, no. I'm after the vampires now. Yeah. Okay, so what, what, what's in store? Can you give us even a little sneak peek? I just, I just think the thing, the, the show keeps on growing and the fans keep on growing. And once it hit Netflix, Spain and Portugal, everyone really started to embrace the show. And that's what's been amazing. So this year, um, the, the, the world grows even deeper and you really get the sense of relationships in the show in the apocalypse so it's i can't wait for people to see the season perfect well we're excited too and we're excited to come backstage and visit you guys i would i would love that we're on, working on, on it oh that's uh, let me know i'll get you in <laughs> let's say hi to my mom real quick yeah come, come on, on in mom this is the one that made julius and, and alex bonovic because she made this is mom this is mom <laughs> so she's my beautiful date awesome. for the night awesome.
Well, welcome back to our Spirits Up segment. Well, we've gone from downstairs at Tavern. We're now upstairs at the new Oxford Public House with Crystal Lee and another wine. Yes, shocking. And, <laughs> and <laughs> a wine here. from your urban winery that we absolutely love. So tell us what we're drinking. Yeah, so we're very excited. So this is a new release for us. This is our 2016 Cabernet Franc. And for me, Cabernet Franc is one of my favorite varietals. I love it. I think British Columbia does it so well. In most other regions in the world, it tends to ripen a little bit earlier than a Cabernet Sauvignon or even Merlot, and so there was a fair bit of it planted. But what we find in the Okanagan is actually it ripens a little bit later because what happens is it has a lower shutdown point. So in the summer, it shuts down generally to about 32 degrees. Right. We get so hot in the South Okanagan that it shuts down so it's having to catch up at the end of the year. So it's really important that you manage your canopy and manage the vineyard to produce this wine. So this is one of my favorites. It's got such great pepper characteristics to it, mm -hmm. red fruits. Um, super versatile when it comes to food because it's got some texture, it's got some structure, some tannin, uh, but just delicious mm. fruit as well. And now so. briefly, Cabernet Franc versus Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. what, what would you say as a wine expert uh, defines well, the Well, I'm not a wine expert, number one. Yes, you are. Well, <laughs> so I think you two, are. I disagree. Two different varietals, so they're relatives. Mm -hmm. So it has some similar characteristics, but what I find with the Cab Franc is it's a little more um, it's got a little more of the personality. So if you look at a Meritage when you're doing the blend, Cabernet Sauvignon tends to be the structure, the backbone of a blend. Okay. So a little more tannin, a little more structure. Mm. To me, Cap Franc has a little more of that spice and that personality, and that's what it has. So that's why, I don't know, maybe I like Cabernet Franc. It's got a little mm. attitude. And some food, <laughs> some food. Oh, this super versa, mm. love it with anything barbecued. Yum. Um, is great. It's, it works really well with that char flavor, uh, steaks, even barbecue chicken. Uh, works really well with pork or duck. Can we say barbecue chips too? Barbecue chips, yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Chips. Oh, well, chips and, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it was on a tangent. Yeah. We want to know a bit more about Time Winery. Yeah, so super exciting. A new project for us. Um, not new to the wine industry, obviously. No, My dad's no. 50th vintage. But we've converted an old movie theater in downtown Penticton to our winery. So. Uh, we're really excited to have people visit us. We've got a full restaurant, tasting bar, It's and it's not just what you refer to as an urban winery of being a tasting room. This is our full production facility. Mm. So we've converted the theater into our winery. That's where we do all of our production, and it's right downtown, 361 Martin Street, Penticton. Yes, good wines, and as I said, yeah, right in the middle of downtown, but they can also visit the vineyard in Summerlin, right? Right yes, on the so water. Yes, so we have yeah. Evolve Cellars, which is our sister winery, and that's where we have one of our vineyards as well, so yeah. Perfect. And we should mention once Again, that you can check out. Uh, you are the house wines, red and white, for all the Donnelly pubs, and we've been at uh, two of them, and a lot more to come. Yes. Yes. Well, cheers mm -hmm. to that. Cheers. Cheers. To cheers. This segment of Spirits Up was brought to you by Time Winery and Evolve Cellars. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> Well, we're just having some fun with our crew who accuse yeah. us of doing way too many takes, but no. we have come luckily to the end of the show for them. Absolutely. We've had a great time on this show, lots of great places, and so definitely remember to follow us on all our social media. Jim, where would they find us? Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, especially Instagram, uh, at Our City Tonight. And for the show, I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Lita Leapins. We'll see you next time on Our City Tonight.